nasty. We're gonna try to put you right on this one and avoid that one. Okay. But I think where you are is pretty good. <laughs> Just tiny bit that way, I think you'll be good. Where are we going today? You forgot! We just left Colorado and we are on our way to Moab, Utah. Where are we gonna go? Remember? A tunnel with sand. This tunnel is called Tusher Tunnel. So we are on our way driving down. We're on Interstate 70 right now, which will take us to the scenic byway. There's two ways to get to Moab from I-70. I'm sure you could Google that, but we are gonna continue driving, but we are on our way to Tusher Tunnel today. It was an unusually nice day on the Colorado Plateau, and we were ready to have some fun. So of course, what do you do when you're having a nice day that's unplanned? Well, for us, we typically either go to Moab or some other off-road destination. After loading up the truck, it was time to get ready for some four-wheel drive experience in Moab. Now, we haven't taken this Tacoma to Moab since it's very, very, very new. So don't be expecting anything extreme from our Moab adventures this time. Just be aware that it is a newer Tacoma, so we are gonna baby it just a little bit. We have finally made it to the turn off to go to Tusher Tunnel, and this is um, Mill Canyon Road. So Mill Canyon Road is off of the highway and you turn off and you get onto a little dirt road here and it'll take you to Tusher Tunnel. So we are gonna start driving down the dirt road. We have been to Tusha Tunnel many times over the years and didn't really think much of it after we left the highway. We've taken several stock vehicles in here including a stock 2017 Toyota Tundra. Typically, this road is good for most 4x4 vehicles. However, sometimes when you take the optional line, things can kind of go a little sideways and get a little bit more challenging on this trail. We'll show you what we mean here in a minute. As you can see, this is pretty much just your normal countryside dirt road, a little bit of sand, a little bit of gravel, so nothing too extreme here. Once you get off the main road, you'll enter into this little wash area. Now, important thing to note, is after you make this left turn, if you take the immediate right to Tusher Tunnel, this is the difficult, harder line that you can be taking if you so desire. If you want the easier, more doable route for most vehicles, you're gonna wanna go up to the second right on this trail. So learn from our mistake. This line has changed a lot over the years and has become more difficult. Yeah, you wanna come this way? Little passenger, go straight. Little bit passenger. Little more passenger. Okay, now straight. Yeah, straight. Okay, keep going straight. Okay, now cut this way. Let's see. Tiny bit this way. We're gonna try to put you right on this one and avoid that one. But okay. I think where you are is pretty good. <laughs> Just tiny bit that way, I think you'll be good. You're good. Oh yeah, you're fine. You're okay. There we go. Okay. 
Well, it's official. We have our first Moab Utah scrape on our brand new Toyota Tacoma. Well, at least it was only a little one on the underside. Sadly, the rock didn't seem any worse for wear. Shucks. After that little gatekeeper section, if you choose to do it, you'll get to the fun part, the sandy bit. This is probably the best part about this trail is all the sand you get to drive on and Moab sand is fun, woohoo. Yeah, I realized that when I got here. <laughs> And for anybody who's wondering, the truck is currently at stock PSI around 35. We didn't air down for this trail since we knew that the weather and the sand conditions didn't really require it this time. So stock PSI, you don't want to do that all the time though. So apparently <laughs> you can avoid the giant rock section down there if you just drive down the wash a little bit more because there's like a bypass. Learn from us. Learn. Mistakes were made, but nothing was damaged. Yeah, start turning a little bit, but not too sharp. Cause this rock here is pretty big. You're fine, I'm watching you. Yeah, you're fine, you can turn more now. There you go. After surviving and realizing our mistake, we finally got to the part that I remember the most, and this is the true fun part of this drive. I like to call them the sand whoops. The sand whoops are really pretty fun and are a really great way to test out your suspension. And also, if you have kids in the back, you might be able to get a giggle or two out of your back seat. Everett really loves this part. You get to feel the vehicle move along with all those curves, the sand underneath your tires, and just kind of moving back and forth. It's a really fun way, to, if you've never taken your vehicle on sand, to kind of give a good feel for it. I do recommend, though, in this section to be mindful of other vehicles that might be in the area so that you make sure that you're minding the trail and you're not getting in their way since it is two-way traffic on this trail since you will be coming back out this direction. But look at these whoops. Aren't these great? You can just kind of go high up and then come back down. They're super fun and I highly recommend having a good time on this section and really enjoying yourself. So this is the parking lot for Tusher Tunnel. And it is sandy. Um, and there's a few parking spots depending on where you want to park. So we parked over here on the side. This is better for trucks if you're going to bring a truck. It's also a great spot to eat some meat and cheese. Right? Everett thinks so. Everett likes meat and cheese. But somebody forgot the bread. I forgot the bread. <laughs> so in case you're wondering, you it's my fault. I forgot the bread, but look at the view. Isn't that cool? The small brief hike to Tusher Tunnel is fairly easy and easy to navigate and not hard to find. At the very edge of the parking lot, you'll see a little trail register that you can walk by and get to the beginning part of the hike. As you can see here, it is sandy, just kind of like the rest of the trail with some slick rock areas, and it's not too steep to get up to this tunnel section. It's actually a very brief hike that anyone can do, including children. So this part is the steepest section of the hike. You'll have to navigate some edges. If you have children, you might need to help them up. 
if you're short like me, you might want to plan on how you're going to get up this little section here. If you walk over to the side over here, there's some little steps that you can use to navigate your way up. I do recommend being careful in this section. This is really the only difficult section of this trail. As you can see here, kiking up to it's pretty flat. There is a few little loose rock sections, but it's not too hard. So, you know, one foot up, one foot up, another one, and then pull yourself up. Not too hard, even for me with my short corgi legs. Once you complete that difficult section, you'll reach another little sandy bit off to the right here, and you'll quickly come to what is called Tusher Tunnel. It's just right there on the left. Tusher Tunnel is an interesting geological feature. A crack in the rock has allowed water to seep in until reaching a harder layer of rock. Where it met the harder rock, it eroded a tunnel from one side of the cliff to the other. The tunnel is about 25 meters or 83 feet in length. It might be a little more, a little less. And high enough that throughout the tunnel it is easy to walk through, though it might be a little scary. Is there a bear living in there? I don't know. We'll have to find out. As you can see, this is a pretty cool little tunnel and you're probably gonna want a flashlight. A cell phone flashlight is just fine for this situation. That's what Dane is using here. And if you're careful, you'll wanna notice that there's a little tiny, little tiny offshoot off to the left over here that's kind of fun for kids to explore. Sadly, we didn't find any bears or cougars or anything in this tunnel today, so no interesting YouTube footage for us. Oh darn. But still, as you can see, Coming into this other side of the tunnel is still pretty spectacular and the view from the other side is totally worth walking through this dark tunnel. Uh, I just fall off the hole. Yeah, just to dead end. Be careful with the edge up here. Not too bad it is. Hey, I'll run down the bottom and run back up all over here for you. Wow! Just climb down and climb up. We get exercise. What do you think, Everett? I like it. You like it? Yeah. It's a good view, isn't it? Oh, Dad, there's a trail down here. Yeah, I got to tie my shoe. Here's the trail, buddy. that is Tusher Tunnel and Tusher Tunnel is pretty cool so if you ever are in the area you should definitely check it out but I'm gonna go hike back to the truck. Yeah, you're good. Think you're gonna go over it. Yeah. There you go. So we just finished going to Tisher Tunnel. Tisher Tunnel is a great place, full of sand as you saw. Um, it used to be a lot easier to get to, but there has been a lot of erosion, which seems to be the theme of this year is erosion. So if you are going to take, go to Tisher Tunnel, just be aware that a stock four-wheel drive can make it. You're just going to need some careful tire placement. And of course, have, make sure to stop and have fun in, this, in the sand because the sand is truly fabulous around Moab, Utah. And we highly recommend Tisher Tunnel for kids and for anyone with a family or even just people wanting to go out and explore. It is truly a great place to stop and visit. Next time on Legendary Trails. We complete another item on our bucket list and I can't believe we've been waiting so long to do this epic hike. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you're not caught up on all of our adventures, you should click on the suggested videos. We hope to see you out on the trail soon. Bye for now.